Two weeks ago today, LMU celebrated its first student academic service and leadership awards ceremony in Sacred Heart Chapel. A combined effort between academic and student affairs to partner and bring together two previously separate annual ceremonies, the academic awards ceremony and the student service and leadership awards assembly. This inaugural event recognized graduating seniors' curricular and co-curricular accomplishments inside and beyond the classroom, whether on or off campus, locally and globally, in a spirit of festive celebration. The event was a testimony to the power of an informing, forming, and transforming LMU education grounded in Ignatian spirituality and pedagogy that promotes the encouragement of learning, the education of the whole person, and the service of faith and promotion of justice, the three pillars of the university's mission statement. Many of you seniors were probably there, whether as recipients of awards or attending to celebrate friends' accomplishments. Among the many awards distributed at the ceremony are the presidential citations. 20 undergraduate students from among over 130 who apply for them, who have distinguished themselves academically, engaged their communities in service, and demonstrated leadership. Two of whom are specially recognized as exemplifying Ignatian values as represented by the university's founding religious communities, Jesuits, Religious of the Sacred Heart of Mary, and Sisters of St. Joseph of Orange. The selection committee that I oversee, tasked with choosing the recipients of the citations, read three essays from each applicant who are asked in typical Ignatian fashion to reflect on their past, present, and future. What did you learn about yourself that inspired you to live out a commitment to the service of faith and promotion of justice? What were your signature achievements and your greatest challenges? And what did you learn from the challenges? How do you imagine the ideals of your LMU education continuing to inform and transform your future life? As diverse as the responses to these essays were, they were all inspiring, a pleasure to read, but also difficult to do so given the many hardships students have experienced. I wish that these three questions could have been posed to all of you graduating seniors, both undergraduate and graduate, as part of an exit interview, because your answers, as diverse as theirs, would also be as inspiring, yet as grounded in difficult realities as your classmates. Your college years have not been typical. The COVID-19 pandemic hit during the second semester of your first year and sent you back home, physically away from the new friends you had made. You remained distant from campus, remotely learning through Zoom for the remainder of the semester and your whole sophomore year. When you returned as juniors, it was not back to normal. You had to wear masks and observe all kinds of protocols. Engagement proved to be challenging. Things were the same, but not the same. Furthermore, during the first months of the pandemic, George Floyd's murder sparked a chain reaction about racial inequities in our country and also the world that confronted us with hard realities and asked us to respond as a society in general and as an LMU community in particular. You students rose to the occasion, whether distance from or present on campus. In addition, mental health issues skyrocketed. These past four years have not been easy. This evening, I would like to focus on each of the questions asked to the presidential citation student applicants I shared with you. I do this considering the context I provided and the three readings you heard that your graduating class representatives selected for this liturgy. It is my hope that this evening's liturgy provides spiritual nourishment for your transitioning journey from the bluff and into your future lives. 
speaking to his people in the name of their God, the prophet Isaiah explains to them in our first reading that God's silence to their prayers and their desolation because of it do not hinge on their sacrifices and penances, but on their acts of justice, releasing those unjustly imprisoned, setting free the oppressed, sharing food with the hungry, sheltering the unhoused, clothing the naked. It is by acting justly on behalf of others and not by denying themselves that they will be consoled, that they will once again feel their God close to them. Isaiah informs his people that acting justly is how they pay homage to God. In other words, faith is served by promoting justice. Think about the classes you took throughout your core curriculum and in your major and minor programs. Also reflect on the activities in which you engaged as part of fraternities and sororities, campus ministry, center for service in action, service organizations, clubs and events. Furthermore, bring to mind the relationships you made, especially with those different from you. Consider how they opened your eyes to social inequities of all kinds. Reflect whether your image of God, that transcendent, what is beyond your senses, has been changed as a result. What have you learned about yourself that has inspired you to live out a commitment to the service of faith and promotion of justice? It is my hope that like the people of Israel, these experiences have helped you get in touch with yourselves and reshape you and your system of values, igniting in you a desire to be persons with and for others wherever you go. Your class's collective acts in favor of social justice issues, particularly racial inequalities, evidence this transformation the LMU experience inside and outside the classroom has provided for you. Your generation's sensitivity to and activity on behalf of social issues of all kinds is a gift that you have embraced and developed while here at LMU. May this spark continue to grow within you throughout your lives into a passionate fire for justice for those on the margins and a light for all to see that God is alive and present because of your just actions. The second reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians reminds us about the supremacy of love in everything that we do. In a way, it is a segue to our first reading. It teaches us that everything that we do, no matter how beneficial it is for others and society, no matter how consonant it is with social justice values, no matter how it may lead others to greater service of God, has to be rooted in love. Love here is not a feeling, not even an action, but an attitude. It's an attitude of openness and availability and service to the other on their behalf, whether at a personal or structural level. It is fundamentally an attitude rooted in mercy and kindness. The first half of the second presidential citations question I shared with you asks, what were your signature achievements during your time at LMU? Considering this reading, I ask, what was the underlying attitude in achieving all that you have? What motivated you? Was love the reason? Was your attitude one that while serving your needs, whether personal or professional, as they should, was also attentive to the other, whether singular or plural? If not, will you consider it in your future? Ours has become a very polarized society. Mercy and kindness have been cast out. Self-righteousness has replaced love. May your acts be always rooted in love. May your availability to others be anchored in compassion, mercy and kindness, wishing what is best and just. Remember your class motto, a quote from Jesuit Father James Martin. 99% of the ethical life is being kind to people. The second half of this question asks to also consider your challenges while at LMU and what you learned from them. The context I provided you at the beginning of this homily frames the individual challenges you have faced and overcome or are still overcoming. Each one of you knows the hurdles, the obstacles, the difficulties, external and internal to you. 
challenges that may not necessarily go away and which will appear in different guises throughout your lives. Be confident. God is with you. Ground yourself in God's love, which nourishes a loving disposition, so that your attitude be always loving to yourself and others. In the Gospel reading, Jesus calls his disciples, us, salt of the earth and light of the world. He, however, points out the negative consequences if salt loses its flavor and if a light is kept underneath a basket. In other words, we are called to witness gospel values and how we behave towards others and what we do, therefore flavoring life with God's presence. How do you imagine the ideals of your LMU education continuing to inform and transform your future life? Throughout your time here, you hopefully have become acquainted with the Ignatian Magis, the more in Latin, which is the call to discerningly go above and beyond in being and doing. May this spirit animate your endeavors, always striving, always reaching for the stars. St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, whose spirituality animates the mission of this university, loved to contemplate the stars in the sky with his feet well planted on the ground. Ground yourselves in the reality surrounding you while never losing sight of your ideals to build the world we want all to live in, inclusive, just, compassionate, kind, loving. The education you have received inside and outside the classroom has given you the tools to do so. Know also that you are not alone in building the world in which you want to live. Solidarity in community is important. You have experienced it in your classes, groups, activities. Continue to be in solidarity with others while working to create a better world wherever you find yourselves. Also, look around you. Don't forget your loved ones. Your family and friends have been there for you and here for you and will continue to be with you. They are God's face to you as you are for them. Let them know your gratitude and love. I conclude my reflection with a character with whom you may be acquainted, or perhaps not, Don Quixote de la Mancha. As a teacher and scholar of Spanish literature, I cannot help sharing him with you. Don Quixote is the main character of the 17th century Spanish novel that bears his name, written by Miguel de Cervantes. The novel is considered a masterpiece, not only of Spanish literature, but of world literature as well. It is the first modern novel. The novel is the tale of a man whose love for books of chivalry inspired him to become a knight, to address and correct the ills of his society, like the knights whose adventures he read. He set out to bring back ideals to a world that no longer had any. Clashes between his idealism and reality are constant throughout the novel, giving it the humorous tone for which it is famous to grab and sustain the reader's attention. Yet, underneath the laughter his adventures provoke in readers, there is a depth to Don Quixote's character, which is LMU's graduation gift to you. Like Jesus Christ and like St. Ignatius of Loyola, to whom he has been compared, Don Quixote is a man of ideals who despite all kinds of challenges and obstacles, refuses to give in his fight against injustice. I hold him up to you as you, like him setting out from his home to heal society's ills, leave the bluff to realize your dreams of a better world. I pray that like Don Quixote, you too may hold on to your ideals. May your creative energies, rooted in the values lived and learned at home and here, ignite you to transform our world into God's kingdom of peace, justice, and inclusive solidarity. In St. Ignatius' words, Ite inflammate omnia, go ignite the world. <laughs>